I'm Bart Wiebeck. I'm the executive director of the Clean Hydrogen uh, Joint Undertaking. And I would like to talk uh, to you a little bit about how we work at the European level with the regions and how we basically support building the hydrogen valleys. And what we actually say always, hydrogen valleys, they are the accelerator for a European hydrogen economy. So, first of all, who is the Clean Hydrogen Joint Undertaking? Well, we have, we have three partners. We are a public-private partnership. We have three partners. The first partner is uh, Hydrogen Europe, is the industry. They have now 470 members. Then we have Hydrogen Europe Research, is the research community. It's research institutes, it's uh, universities. And then, as a public partner, it's the European Commission. The European Commission is for us, of course, very, very important because they give us the cash money to fund all those research and innovation projects around Europe. So, what are our uh, objectives? So, we have four objectives. So, first of all, we need to support the implementation of the European Commission's hydrogen strategy that was built in 2020, you know, the 6 gigawatt next year and the uh, 40 gigawatt by 2030. We need to stimulate the research and innovation on clean hydrogen on three areas, and the production, and the, uh, of course, distribution and the storage, and in various uh, end-use applications. But also, we need to make sure that Europe keep its competitive level. So we need to make sure that the European companies can keep the leadership, because today, a lot of the co European companies have worldwide leadership. And finally, we need to contribute, of course, to the ambitious targets of the European uh, Commission, of Europe as, and as, as a whole, by 2030, minus 55% of CO2 reduction, and in 2050, to be the first continent on the Earth to be uh, carbon neutral. Of course, we have also certain specific objectives. Of course, we need to improve our cost efficiency uh, of the technology. Uh, we have to improve the quality and so on. Uh, we need to also make sure that we generate all the knowledge, because we have now today more than 350 projects in Europe that we finance, and we generate a lot of knowledge on, that, uh, on those projects that we finance, because each project they need to uh, report, of course, and so we need to make sure that all this knowledge is, of course, uh, disseminated and that everybody has access to that knowledge. Of course, also, we need to uh, show those uh, products, so we need to demonstrate, we need to, to put things in the field that people, citizens, companies can uh, use those uh, technologies and also gain uh, ex experience with it. And of course, very important, make sure that the people in the street, our citizens, know about this technology. Yeah? Because everybody knows batteries, we've grown up with batteries, but nobody knows hydrogen and fuel cells, or very little, unless we have a scientific background. So that's why we need to reach out still to many, many more uh, people. So. What we are doing is actually uh, research and development across the entire hydrogen value chain. So from storage, from hydrogen and natural gas, from liquid hydrogen carriers, hydrogen transportation, compression, hydrogen refueling stations. So, and then we use all that in transport applications, stationary applications. When we look to transport, we go from everything from heavy duty, waterborne rail, aeronautic. When we look to stationary, we look into stationary fuel cells, uh, turbines, this is new for us, the turbines, the boilers and burners. And then, of course, we have a lot of horizontal activities like cross-cutting, uh, which is basically education. Uh, so we have a lot of educational programs. We work on hydrogen valleys. You will hear more about that in a minute. Also, we will make sure that we generate and support the supply chain at the European Union. And we have some very strategic um, low TRL research topics. For example, materials. Huh? So what do we do? How can we replace materials? These are strategic for Europe uh, research uh, topics. So we have 314 projects supported so far. We are uh, going to sign another, another ones uh, in the coming weeks. So we have spent now 1.2 billion euro taxpayers' money. But in our partnership, it's a euro for a euro. So also the private industry put 1.2 billion euros. So with all those projects, we have now spent almost like 2.5 billion euro. And you can see all the different projects in the different domains and how much money we have spent. But 
I think this is not so important. So we exist now 15 years, and this was a, yeah, a journey, a long journey, where basically we started at a very, very basic research, where we were developing the MEAs, the bipolar plates of fuel cells, so really the small things, where then we gradually started to build stacks fuel cells, where we put it in the first car and the first truck and the first micro CHP. Then we started to make really uh, big demonstrations and finally, now we are already starting to design the next generation of those applications and also move to new applications, more heavy duty. We always focused also on the business cases because whatever we did in research and demonstration, it was always first done by a study to show what is the business cases, where do we need to do, put the money for research. So we also do uh, additional activities. Uh, to fulfill, of course, our objectives that we got from the European Commission. Uh, we need to work also on synergies with other programs because in Europe there are a lot of funding programs, so we work together with many of them. Uh, we need to work on the regulation codes and standards, so every year we inform to the Commission, look, that's where you need to put some money on research for the regulation codes and standards, so uh, we work together with the industry to get input for that. Uh, safety, very important. We have a European hydrogen safety panel, which I call my top gun, because they are really world experts on hydrogen safety. They are analyzing all the incidents that are happening, and then they uh, make a report, and on our website you can see the lessons learned. Uh, we will launch very soon a European hydrogen sustainability and circularity panel, So, because we want to make sure now that all the projects that we are funding are sustainable, and especially uh, meet the circularity uh, requirements. Uh, we gather all this knowledge, as I mentioned. We help also our SMEs a lot, uh, because a lot of innovation comes from the small and medium enterprises, so we need to help them. We work internationally together with our friends in the US, with, in Japan, and so on. And of course, we communicate, like what's what I'm doing today. So, working with regions. Why do we work with regions? Well, first of all, we want to make them aware about hydrogen and fuel cell uh, technologies. We help them also to develop their ideas because a lot of those regions, they have fantastic ideas, but it's only a PowerPoint. It's not a project. It's an idea. It's a dream. So we need to help them to make or to turn a PowerPoint into a real uh, project. And for that, basically, we started in 2016. We reached out to all the regions in Europe and to say, look, work with us. We will help you. And now today, we work with more than 100 regions in Europe together. And we have three programs developed. The first one is project development assistance. As I mentioned, some of them, they have really, yeah, just an idea, a great idea. And we now pay a consultant to help those regions to turn their idea into a real financially sound project. Huh? Secondly, we also fund uh, then their project. So once it's financially sound, it's a good project, then they can participate in our program uh, we will fund then those projects if they are still, uh, I mean, evaluated in a positive way. And, and, and one of those uh, projects that we are funding is Hygiene Valleys. Huh? So they can submit a proposal for becoming a Hygiene Valley, which is an ecosystem, and we come to that in a minute. And also, um, through the mission innovation, uh, we also generated a Hygiene Valley platform. So, what is the project development assistance initiative that we have? So, um, as I said, a lot of these regions, they have their own targets. They need to decarbonize targets. And honestly, a lot of those regions, they are the authorities, they don't know yet how hydrogen and fuel cells can help them to get to those uh, targets. And we also see that often they don't have enough knowledge about the regulation. They don't have, I mean, national regulation or on certification and so on. So we need to help them as well to educate um, on, on that area, and that's why the project development assistance aim is really to give them some support through consultants that help them to, uh, yeah, with all those information. So in 2020, we start with the first PDA, and at that time, we selected 11 regions. Um, we have, they support, I mean, we will support or help them to basically make clear plans for a number of projects, which are basically a value of in the range of uh, almost 750 million euro. And almost, almost more than 20 regions benefited of this uh, knowledge transfer. Because 
when we helped these 11 regions, there was a lot of knowledge generated, and then we also shared that knowledge with other regions. And uh, this year, we just started our PDA 2, so the second generation. Again, 15 regions were selected. Mainly, we focused on this time on cohesion countries, or in other words, EU 13 means the 13 countries that joined uh, uh, recently the European Union, but also outermost regions uh, and islands of Europe because sometimes we forget them, and it's important also that we help to develop them. And, of course, uh, the PDA2 will also, of course, disseminate all those information. Overall goal, we want to help the regions to get to uh, realize their decarbonization targets. So here you can see the couple of projects that we supported in 2020, so well spread over Europe. I mean, you see it's about mobility, it's trucks, uh, refuse trucks, it's buses, but also many times it's about electrolyzer building, onshore, offshore, uh, coaches, um, buses again, trolley buses as well, even ships uh, there, trains. So a lot, a lot of different uh, yeah, projects that we help them to be, make it financially sound. So on the PDA2, these were uh, in 2023, so here you can see the 15 selected projects of the different countries where they are located. And so you can easily now understand we're focusing really on these cohesion uh, countries because we need to kickstart uh, things there as well. So, as I said, what are hydrogen valleys? Well, hydrogen valleys are really an accelerator for the European hydrogen economy. So it's an ecosystem. It needs to be in a geographically um, fixed area and needs to be in that some like let's say 50 kilometer uh, radius area uh, it has to serve more than one end sector end sector so it's not only a mobility so for example if you put 10 hydrogen buses no that's not a hydrogen valley it's just a project yeah? so it needs to build around mobility industry production of hydrogen distribution so you build an ecosystem and yeah? so it has to have different um, steps in the hydrogen value chain. And of course, what we always say, basically a hydrogen valley is also a local market maker because you produce hydrogen, but also you create immediately your off-takers with it. And actually I have a very interesting story is that I, I talked recently to a hydrogen uh, supplier and, or a producer. And he said, look, I went with my sales team one month through Europe to sign contracts for hydrogen off-takers. And after one month, they came back to me, and you know how many contracts they signed? Zero. And why is that? Because they were thinking it's business as usual. Okay, they don't use natural gas anymore, they move to hydrogen, that's it. No, it's not like that. You need to create the market. And this is what we do with this kind of hydrogen valley system. We make sure that the production is there, but also the offtake at the same time. And that is how gradually you build up. And then we will build many, many hydrogen valleys across Europe. We have identified at this moment 60 hydrogen valleys in Europe. And the next step is that we will start to connect those hydrogen valleys. We call that hydrogen connectors. And that's where we will build the European Hydrogen Union. So it's a time, it will take time, but this is the steps that we have decided to, to go through. And here you can see a number of uh, projects already that we started. I mean, the big hit was in the Orkney Island, where basically we produce hydrogen on the islands and we bring it on shore to serve uh, several purposes. It was the first one, very early. We learned a lot from this project. And then we said, look, we want to build the first European hydrogen valley. We said the America, they have their Silicon Valley, let them have their Silicon Valley, we will build our hydrogen valley here in Europe. And we did an application, I mean, a call for proposals, and we had a lot of uh, regions that wanted to become the hydrogen valley, but the North Netherlands were the first ones, and they won. And so now we are building there a huge hydrogen valley with different uh, applications. Uh, you can see them, aviation, they're building pipelines, underground storage. So really a whole ecosystem. It's now worth more than 100 million euro in that only single uh, place. Then we have a first hydrogen island in Spain that we are uh, basically help to decarbonize the island of Mallorca. Uh, you have to imagine that in Mallorca, one million people live there, Mallorcan people. In summer, 12 million people. So it's like the whole Belgium moved to Mallorca during summer. So the energy requirement between winter or let's say in, the, in between uh, summer, winter and the top season, it's huge. 
So how do you manage that? And hydrogen can help them. And then, of course, in the repower EU, which was, uh, I mean, you know, that after the Russian attack, basically um, the Commission decided to uh, repower EU uh, with hydrogen. And so we received actually an additional 200 million euro for the next three years to build more hydrogen valleys. I need to double the amount of hydrogen valleys in Europe to 50. And uh, end of January, I have announced that we will put 106 million euro in nine hydrogen valleys. And also, um, those nine hydrogen valleys are in the North Adriatic, the Baltic Sea, Bulgaria, Greece, and so on. So really, you will see hydrogen valleys moving across uh, Europe. <clears throat> As I say, uh, it's an accelerator for the European hydrogen economy, uh, where we are now. You can see the different projects, how much money we have uh, put it in. And you will see now in 23, we will have much more hydrogen valleys because actually we just closed down our call for the hydrogen valleys and we have 28 applications, which are now next Monday, we start to evaluate all those new hydrogen valleys and we will see how many will get uh, funded. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, this is basically the call that we wrote down, and that's where we had the, the hydrogen valleys. Which is important is also that we decided to go for two different types of hydrogen valleys, big scale and small scale. A big scale is basically gets 20 to 25 million euro. Small scale is now around 9 million. And why do we do that? Because some regions are ready to really go big, but some regions are not yet ready to go so big. So that's why we, we make diff two different types of uh, hydrogen valleys uh, style. Also, we uh, basically had a big event in Brussels on the 28th February uh, and the 1st of March, where basically we uh, announced the uh, an European roadmap for hydrogen valleys. Uh, um, you can download actually this, um, let's say, publication from our website, but it's very interesting. It shows you good examples, lessons learned, and uh, also what, how, what, is, what is a hydrogen valley and what can I do and how can you become a hydrogen valley? So everything is there. Also, on the, in the mission innovation, we have a hydrogen valley platform. Uh, last Monday, we announced the new platform, uh, the relaunch of the platform. And today, I can tell you that worldwide, we have now 81 hydrogen valleys in 31 countries. Within the mission innovation, we have agreed to have 100 hydrogen valleys by 2030 globally and so as you see we have now already 81 so please go to this website h2v.eu so just to show you that in january 21 we had at that time 37 today in may 2023 we have worldwide 81 hydrogen valleys for a total investment of 90 billion euro so just go to our website you can find everything there so you can just to put them a little bit on the, on the region. I mean, Europe, we have around 60. We have a couple of Asia Pacific. We have a nine in the Americas and in the Middle East and Africa also already a few. So you can gradually see something that started in Europe on the hydrogen valleys is now being spread all over the world. So it's nice to basically see such a yeah, expansion. And finally, um, the hydrogen valleys, they need to focus on green hydrogen. And as I said, they need to be used in, in different uh, sectors, mobility, industry, and the energy sector. And just to show you, like for upstream, 8.5 million tons of green hydrogen will be produced annually in all those hydrogen valleys. You can see the different uh, electrolyzer technologies. Also midstream will be a lot of uh, hydrogen will be used and, and downstream as well. I think I need to speed up because the next person is ready. But finally, just join us if you want to uh, build a hydrogen valley, or you want to know much more, go to our platform, see, I mean, learn about them. Also, once you become a hydrogen valley, you will get from the European Commission an official seal that you can use in all your, uh, uh, in all your publications or communication activities. And so with that, I would like to stop. Thank you.